Okay, today's rehab session is about trying to stretch out your chest and your pecs to get a bit more range through the front and improve like the mobility in the front of your chest to help you with posture or back pain or simply just shoulder mechanics. Now, many people ask me, you know, what is the best chest stretch? So the one I give them is on the roller. Now there's some modifications in case you don't have a roller or you're too tight on the floor, that sort of thing, or you want to do it standing. But we'll start off with the roller because I think that's the best one and I'll explain why. When you're on the roller, or when you do the stretch, what I want you to do is get up and roll it. Now, hey, if you don't have a roller, roll up one of these mats and roll into a roll or a yoga mat and make a roll. You just need to be elevated off the ground. The good thing about the roller, it's easy, okay, it doesn't sort of soften out, it doesn't flatten, but also the hardness helps you with stretching through your back. So when you get a chest stretch, you also get a bit of a back stretch. Now with this one, what I want you to doing to try and open up through here is to start off in this position and try and get your hands out in what we call a T-shape. So you're basically looking at your hands, you're trying to get them out and on the ground. Now we'll come to, if you can't get your hands on the ground, we'll come to that in a minute, but if you can start in this position here, do have a roller, this is where I want you to start. Now some people who are super tight will already feel a little bit of tightness through there. Now, what I want you to see if you can do is from here is get your elbows down onto the ground. Now, when people most do that, what they tend to do is do that, okay, and their hands come up. What I want you to try and do is see if you can keep your arms out in that T shape and then drag, if you watch my elbows, drag your elbows down towards your feet like that and try and keep your hands on the ground. Okay, so you're going from, it's a very subtle position, you're going from here and you're dropping, you watch my elbows, drop your elbows down that way. Okay, now what that's going to do is give you a stretch right through the front of your chest and your shoulder on both sides. It'll feel quite a sort of like a, almost like what I call a spiderweb wrapping type stretch through here. It's a little bit on the painful side, but I don't want you to get the point where you feel like you're cramping through your shoulders and your neck, or you're getting pins and needles or numbness. So you can't go that far, because then you're trying to stretch out nerve tissue, we're just gonna aggravate you. So don't go so far that you feel like a line of nerve pain, or you're getting pins and needles, because that's just too much. You wanna be aiming for a chest stretch in that position, and you're trying to keep you know, your wrists on the ground. Don't let your wrists do watch this, don't let your wrists do that, okay? And make sure the other two things is your head needs to be long. If you start sort of going this position, you might start getting headaches. So long in the back of the neck, and if you watch my ribs, I don't want it flaring up like that. Okay, so the other thing I need to do is add on a little bit of core and bring those ribs down. So I'm a bit more active here, not necessarily flattening my back, but just a little bit more active there. So when I go into this stretch, I'm not doing that. I don't want to let my upper back arch off because that's sort of cheating. So you've got to try to be a bit more active here and then pull down into that position. Now some of you, and this is probably applying to the people who need chest stretching, will say, that is far too much, that's just too full on, I can't even hold it. Because, to be honest, I want you holding this for about 5 minutes, up to 10 minutes, so it's a long stretch. So it needs to be tolerable for that amount of time. If you can't even hold it for 30 seconds, get rid of the roller. You're probably fine, if you're so tight, why don't you just start off on the floor, and just get in that position, at least in this position, you can focus on neck position, you can focus on core position, start off in your T, right? And then, because your elbows are already on the ground at that point, then you can just focus on this movement here. So you're gonna go down with the elbows and then keep your hands or wrists, trying to get them back on the floor. So you're getting a bit of more of a stretch, you know, in the same position, it's just not as brutal. And once you've got that, you can focus on all these positions, then you may find that's a little bit more comfortable, and you can hold there, and once you've improved on that, then you can go back to the roller. The main reason why I want you up on a roller is you've got a little bit more height. On the floor, you're only getting back, you know, as far as your shoulder. On the roller, you're getting back further. So you're gonna get more stretch range through the shoulder and stretch range through here. So it makes more sense to be up on the roller and you just get a better range there. But obviously if you don't have that or that's too much, just try on the floor. Now, if you're out and about and you can't get on the floor, maybe it's not appropriate, maybe you don't have enough room, that sort of thing, you can try standing up. And most people say, oh, can I just do a stretch in the doorway? Well, yes you can, but I want you to do it the same as you do on the floor. So come and check this out. So 
we'll pretend this is a doorway, right? So you can also do this in the gym. So you can do it if you've got some like pillars or a, a frame, like a, a rack system, that sort of stuff, you can put your hands there. So we'll pretend this is a doorway, okay? And this is the frame either side. So what you can do, instead of, instead of being like this and trying to stretch your pec out one side, I find it's very sort of jammy in the shoulder joint. And people always are trying to work out where to put their arm, okay? And it only does one side at a time. We want to try and get a whole stretch through the front to help you with that movement so you can sort of set those shoulders back a little bit better when you're typing or whatever you're doing. So I would start the same drill, go out in a T, okay? So start there in that position there, and then what you're trying to do is not just come forward, okay? Go down into that W position first. So you've got to think, okay, don't flare my ribs out, don't arch my back, pull my ribs down, keep my neck in the right position, come into my W position, which you may find is a bit you know, easier, and then you can come forward and bang, there's the stretch straight away. You just gotta make sure that if you're tight here, okay, between your shoulder blades, that when you do that stretch, you don't go and make it really sore there, because sometimes it's just too much load. So just be careful how much load you put through this. Just focus on, I wanna try and get in my W position, so I go from a T, so like a W, if I look at my arms, it's a W, right? And then you try and pull forward to the point where can I maintain that? I find this is not as effective, but if it's your only option, then great. The reason being is you have to sort of really sort of push forward and lean into it, okay? It's not a complete rest like the roller is, but if it's the only option you've got, it's not too bad. So that one and the one the roller is gonna work on a sort of a global stretch through the front, both sides at the same time to release here but also allow a little bit more movement in the back, which may help you with your mobility this way and that way to give you that postural sort of position that you want. Get rid of some of your pain, get rid of the tightness. Check that out. See you next time.